Hi everyone, it's Tarrant. And Stella here from Meeple University on the Dice Tower. Thanks for joining us. Today we'll be teaching you how to play Storm Chasers the Game, a game published by Buffalo Games. Let's get to it. Storm Chasers the Game is a real-time competitive game for two to four players. Players are storm chasing scientists and they will head out around the board to find the storms, conduct research, and return to the research base to complete their findings. But be wary of the tornado. One player plays as the storms, and if you get caught in the midst, you may get blown away. To set up, separately shuffle the storm cards into four decks based on their colour, starters and level 1, 2 and 3. Deal each player one starter, two level 1s, five level 2s and four level 3s. The 11 non-starters are shuffled into a face-down pile, and then two are flipped face-up alongside the starter. These will be the storms that the player is trying to research at the start of the game. Lay out the board, and then each player takes a vehicle pawn and places it onto any one of the research stations of their choice on the edges of the board. Multiple players can occupy the same space. Give each player 12 lightning tokens. Now it's time to choose who's going to be the Storms for the first round of the game. Each round in Storm Chasers, one player is going to play as the Storms, and all other players will be the Storm Chasers. The Storm Chasers will be trying to do their research, while the Storms try to disrupt them. Everyone will get the chance to be the Storms during the game, but for now you're just choosing the first round Storms. That player takes the five black Storms dice, the Tornado Spinner, a timer which counts up towards three minutes, this does not come with the game, and the five hexagonal Storm Pieces. That player now places the black tornado in the centre of the map, and places each of the other hexes within two spaces of the tornado, near the centre of the board. All the other players take five white Storm Chaser dice. Set the timer to 3 minutes, and you're now ready to play. Storm Chasers is played in real-time rounds, each lasting 3 minutes. The Storm Chaser players will move around the board, attempting to conduct research on the different types of storms, while the Storms player will attempt to move the useful storms away and the tornado towards the players, all in the aim of disrupting their research. The Storm Chasers and the Storms play the game under slightly different sets of rules, and so we'll look at each side separately, beginning with the Storm Chasers. As the Storm Chasers, you'll take actions by rolling the five white dice and resolving one of the icons on the sides. This is a real-time game, so the number of actions you take depends on how quickly you can roll and resolve the actions. When you roll the dice, you must roll all of the dice that you have available to you, you can't just roll partially, you must roll them all. Once you've finished a roll, you may, if you don't like the symbols, roll again, or you may resolve a single action by taking some or all of the symbols of one type and resolving the associated action. So here, you could take up to three movement or do one action with either of these storms, but you couldn't do more than one of those options. There are five symbols on the dice, but there are only two actions. The wheel allows you to move, and one of the storm icons allows you to research the matching type of storm. If you choose the move, then each wheel that you've rolled allows you to move one space into an adjacent hex. There are no restrictions on storm chaser movement as long as you remain within the map. You can move into or through spaces with other players, and you can move into or through storms. You can also move into or through research stations of any colour. The other action is to collect data from a certain type of storm. To do this, you must roll icons that match the storm your pawn is currently on. Then take any or all of the dice matching those symbols and place them onto matching symbols on your three face-up storm research cards. This is your first step towards completing these cards and scoring the points shown on them. 
Once you've placed a die on a card, it's now locked in place, and for subsequent die rolls, you'll roll only the dice you have left, reducing the number of dice you'll have for taking actions. To unlock those dice, you must complete your research. Move to a research station which shows the matching icon, and then you can unlock any dice of that icon and replace them with lightning bolts from your supply. Once every icon on a card has a lightning bolt, that card is complete. Return the lightning bolts to your supply, flip the card over into your face down scoring pile, and then look through the rest of your cards and choose one to place face up to try to complete next. Remember, this is all still happening in real time, and so choose quickly. Any points on cards in your face down pile will score at the end of the game. And those are all of the actions you need to play as the Storm Chasers. Remember that you must roll all your dice at once, and you can only do one action per die roll. Your actions are to move, to place dice on your research cards, and to deliver those to the research stations. So now let's have a look at how to play as the Storms. As the Storms, you'll play with the black dice instead of the white ones. You'll still have all of your research cards the same way you did when you were a Storm Chaser player, but you don't interact with those on your Storm's turn. Essentially, you cannot score points as the Storms. Your whole aim is to stop the other players from scoring. The Storm's player starts the round by starting the timer. Like the Storm Chasers, you are playing in real time, trying to take as many actions as you can by rolling the dice and resolving the symbols. Like the Storm Chasers, you must roll all your dice at once. You can't hold any over from the previous roll. But unlike the Storm Chasers, you can resolve multiple actions from the same roll. On this roll, you could resolve Rain twice, Tornadoes twice, and Lightning once. Each icon you roll allows you to move the matching Storm one space around the board. If there are any player pawns on the matching storm, then you move that player along with the storm. A storm tile may never enter a space with another storm tile. You can never move one of the four coloured storms outside the yellow line, which is near the edge of the map. But you can move the tornado anywhere except for into a research station. One of the major things the Storm player will try to do is capture other players in the tornado. As soon as this happens, the player in the tornado must stop rolling dice and stop taking actions. The Storm's player now spins the tornado spinner and may do so from any location on the board. As long as the tornado is spinning, the player is captured and can't take any more actions. This can end in two ways. If the tornado stops spinning on the board, then move the player's pawn to where it stopped and remove the spinner. Or if the tornado leaves the board, then place the player's pawn nearest where it left the board. Either way, that player is now released and can start rolling and taking actions immediately. If it's not clear exactly which space the tornado points at, it's the storm chaser who gets to choose where to start and any pieces knocked or disturbed by the spinner while it is spinning are considered to have been moved to that new location. The storm will always create havoc around the board. The tornado tile can still be moved and capture other pawns while the spinner is spinning, and when this happens, both pawns will end up in the spinner's final destination. The round ends when the three minutes is up. If your timer doesn't make noise, then the round continues until the Storms player notices that three minutes is up and announces the end of the round. Storm Chaser players who still have dice on their cards now unlock them and return them to their supplies without putting lightning bolts on those cards. Players must take dice to the research stations in the round they locked them in order to score them. However, any lightning bolts on cards remain until subsequent rounds. The next player clockwise becomes the new Storms, so give that player the Spinner and the Storms dice, and give the previous Storms a set of Storm Chaser dice. You'll start the new round with all pieces in the same positions they finished the last round. The new Storms player now begins play again. The game ends after each player has played as the Storms once, 
or in a two-player game after each player has played as the Storms twice. To determine your final score, count up the numbers showing in the bottom corner of each Storm card that you've completed, and then add one point for each leftover lightning bolt on an incomplete card. This score here would be 19. The player with the highest score wins. In the event of a tie, whoever had the most lightning bolts on cards currently breaks that tie, and if still tied, victory is shared. And that's how to play Storm Chasers the game. If you find this video useful, please help us by hitting that like button and subscribe to the Dice Tower if you haven't already done so. And if you have any questions, comments or feedback, please leave that in the comments section below. Thanks for watching and see you next time.